Usually I review stuff that I like. So usually my reviews are really positive. They're all cupcakes and ho-hos and unicorns and everything wonderful in this world. And dating back to when I first got my iPad, I was really hoping to do some really good reviews on some of the great vector apps that I could get my hands on. But here I am months later and yeah, that's not to say that there isn't anything good out there. It's just slim pickings. Now it might be that vector apps are just better suited for the desktop. But in all my exploring, I did find some good ones, and so I'm gonna be doing a roundup of some of the things that I found out there in the App Store uh, that are pretty decent. To test these out, I'm putting Tim through a very rigorous scientific test I call the Super Cat Ball Test. What is the Super Cat Ball Test? I'm glad you asked. I am vectoring up this round, ball-shaped Superman cat in Adobe Illustrator using mostly basic vector shapes and a little bit of the pen tool. It's not anything too complicated and it's something anybody who knows a little bit about Illustrator could replicate pretty easily. I stick to the really basic stuff here. It took me maybe 15 or 20 minutes. There are no crazy filters or bloat tools or gradients, just your bare bones vector tools. What I really wanna figure out is can an app on the iPad replicate this? And that, my friends, is the Super Cat Ball Test. Now, the first app that passes that test is called Graphic by Autodesk. I have all my shapes, and the pen tool works great. And it's really nice because the hit areas on all the anchor points are really big. It's easy to reshape things. The freeform drawing tool also works really well, which is nice if you like to ink in a vector tool like Illustrator. You can type it up the lines and get a smoother stroke if that's the type of thing you're looking for. In a nutshell, all the core basic tools you'd expect in any vector app are here. The interface is clean and simple, and everything seems to be laid out well. As a bonus, the app throws in a whole bunch of templating elements. There are templates where you can lay out a floor plan or templates where you can construct a mobile app and a couple others. These are the type of things that could come in really handy if you need them. Now, it did take me quite a bit longer to draw my super cat ball shape. Now, a lot of that has to do with the lack of a mouse and keyboard shortcuts and that sort of thing. It's little things like selecting multiple shapes, replicating them and flipping them. It's all possible in the app. It's just not quite as fast. It's also one of those things where you don't understand how dependent you are on the keyboard and mouse until you don't have them. But overall, graphic? gets my thumbs up. Another app that works pretty well is iDesign. iDesign also passes the Super Cat Ball test with flying colors, and it has pretty much the basic tool set that you find in graphic or other vector apps. When you first open iDesign, it is a little confusing. All the tools are hidden away and it's hard to tell what to do, but after a little bit of fiddling, I found exactly what I was looking for. And it takes a little bit of getting used to figuring out what all the menu elements do. But there's a lot here to like. I like that there's a toolbar dedicated to doing things like alignment, layer reordering, shape merging, and slicing. And of course, you can export your work as an SVG and open it up in another vector program on the desktop. The one little thing that I don't care for is the interface in general. Like there are a couple things that I just don't know what they do. Like, what's this little arrow thing for? And the save icon doesn't really do anything. But these little quirks aside, it's a very good app. This is where things start to go downhill a little bit. Now, the next app is called Scribble. Now, Scribble isn't an atrociously bad app. In fact, it's cheaper than the other apps. It's only 99 cents. But this is a case where you get what you paid for. It doesn't have a big shape assortment, so technically it didn't pass the super cat ball test. But I was more or less able to get something that resembled a cat. But there's a lot of quirky tools here that are just kind of weird. Like the ballerina pencil tool that fills your shapes with random colors. Or the other ballerina pencil tool that fills your strokes with random colors. And if you're one of the three people in the universe who's begging Adobe for this feature, they've got you covered. What's that you say? You want graphic apps that are terrible? Well, the App Store has you covered. Okay, so there's this smattering of apps that technically pass the super cat ball test. Just scrolling through the App Store, you see things like InkPad and InkPad Pro and InkPad 2 and iVector and InkBot and Illustration DrawPad. And there are like dozens more. Why are there so many ink pads? Okay, so they're all based on an open source app called InkPad. I have no other way to say it. These apps suck. Stay away. So why does this really bug me? Well, number one, they're taking something free and that's open source and has a lot of potential and they're slapping it up on the app store and charging money for it. It's just something about trying to profit on the hard work of other people that really rubs me the wrong way. And I might be able to accept this if these ports weren't terrible. They either crash a lot like InkPad 2 or incredibly important things are just totally broken. For example, in most of these, the color picker just doesn't doesn't work. I can't use the red spectrum because the menu cruft is covering it. These people didn't even use their app or try to create anything in it. They just grabbed it, ported it, and are selling it. I'd be cool with this if somebody took InkPad and actually improved on it a little bit and then put it in the app store. But out of the five or six apps that I paid money for, nobody has done this. So one of them, AI Advanced Illustrator for Professional, Ultimate Vector Editor, catchy name guys, costs $30. And you can see in this screenshot that the color picker is broken. I mean, just even look at the description. Illustrator Professional is a vector app designed from scratch for the iPad. Designed by someone else. Ugh, I just, ugh. ugh. Do they pass the super cat ball test? Yes. 
assuming you're cool with a blue or green cat. So how can you tell if the app in the app store that you're looking at is a port of InkPad? Most of these use the same exact sample artwork. Also, you'll see some of the root views talk about how broken they are. If they don't have any reviews at all, just kind of avoid them. Now, full confession, I bought like three or four of them before I was like, oh, I caught on to what you're playing here. So there are more that I haven't even tried. So maybe somebody out there has taken InkPad and made a better version of it great for them, but I'm not gonna go and buy the other 20 just to find out. And it's a shame because with a little elbow grease, this could be a pretty good app. Okay, I have to find my happy place. Let's talk about concepts. Now I reviewed concept in its own review a couple weeks ago because I like it that much. And I figured it was worth including here just really quickly uh, because technically it is a vector app. It doesn't pass the super cat ball test because it's more like a drawing and sketching app and it feels like a traditional drawing app, but it outputs vector. Anyway, I don't wanna go too much into depth of it. If you're interested in that one, go check out the review. The other one I want to check out is made by Adobe and it's called, wait for it, Illustrator. But there's nothing really conventional about this app that feels like Illustrator. It's more like a sketching app that outputs in vectors. It's kind of a bummer because they really rethought a lot of these tools in creative ways, like the little shape template tool. And so you could put a template down and I could draw a perfect circle or oval or that sort of thing, but I can't actually fill it. Or when I draw a line, I can't actually edit it. So all the things that you're kind of used to that make vectors so powerful and morphable just aren't there. It's like they started building the most amazing iPad vector app ever and then gave up halfway through and just pushed it out to the app store. Anyway, I've talked about this before and how disappointed I am in Adobe's apps, so it's not really worth beating a dead horse. There's a video somewhere uh, about that. Lastly, I want to mention an app called Assembly. Assembly came surprisingly close to passing the Super Cat Ball test. Now, Assembly isn't a traditional vector app, and it doesn't sell itself as a traditional vector app. It's a design app. It's meant for, like, creating layouts and that sort of thing. But the app comes with so many shapes that you can morph and change a little bit that you can pretty much create what I was going for. And you can export that as a vector, too. Yeah, so overall, there was, like, way more out there than I really expected, but there was a way more garbage out there than I expected, too. You know, and overall, um, even though there are some good apps out there, it just never really quite felt as fast as it does on the desktop. I really, really miss my mouse and keyboard. But for making basic shapes and icons and, and pulling them into other programs like Procreate or Medibang, uh, it worked pretty well. Now, graphic and iDesign are way beyond everybody else out there. So those would be the two that I recommend. Uh, they're both under $10 and I think, you know, worth it if that's the thing you're looking for. And of course, there are a handful of other apps in the App Store that I just didn't get around to trying, either because they looked really bad or they didn't have any reviews, and I kind of got a little skeptical after a while. But if I did miss any that are worthwhile that you're using, you know, let me know in the comments. Same thing with any questions, comments, or Twitter, as usual, and if you like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in a week or two.